So here's the Yukon Denali Ultimate with the 6.2 liter. This is the short version. I would get the longer version if I were to get one, so the Yukon XL, but I love this color and I really like seeing a Denali Ultimate. I just like the, the black emblems and the, the non tough chrome, just more of a blacked out chrome. Kind of surprised that the emblems on the side are not blacked out in there on the side because they are in the front and the rear, but they're not down below. Would also have been kind of neat to see a black tip exhaust. But the interior of this thing I really like. So with the Yukon, you get the standard handles. But this is just like the, the pickup truck, the, the Sierra. You know, call me crazy, but I actually in some ways like the interior of this better than the Escalade. I don't know. I just, uh, I like this like stitching design. I think it looks kind of cool. You still get the real premium headsets here with the Bose speakers. But yeah, I don't know. This is nice. Yeah, just... Just the layout of all the infotainment, it's nice. This, this to me, in ways, almost looks a little more premium and less, less over the top, you know? Obviously, you don't get the Alcantara roof or the suede, whichever material you want to call it, but I really like the side door panels, like that knurled wood look, looks, looks cool. And then one of the things I learned about the Ultimate, you get this, it's hard to see, but there's like this little design in the wood and you can't see it there, but you can see it on some of the seats. That's topography, kind of shows like Denali. I think that's like the, the range in Alaska, but just the lighting and the dash and everything, I, I really like the Yukon Denali interior. It just seems like it makes sense. Here's another cool thing. So this center console here, press this button right there, and this whole thing moves back. So who's ever in the second row has a little more uh, little more um, convenience to getting cups or using that for whatever holding an iPad or whatever but then you still have the storage down below oh, that's pretty nice put it back let's press this button here it's a cool feature I'm kind of surprised they didn't do something like that on the Escalade but it's a nice fit and finish I mean when you look at the price of this probably fifteen to twenty thousand dollars less you have the exact same engine as the engine transmission transfer case everything as the Escalade, kind of surprised that there's not, you know, it, it's kind of a big gap there in price. But, you know, you get a lot of the same features with this. You're getting the power boards. You're getting the same engine, same trans, same second row entertainment here, same panoramic roof. You just don't have uh, the Alcantara. You get the same entry. You know, these fold up the exact same way in the Escalade as you do the Yukon. They even, they even go back the same way. Now let's look in the rear. Yeah, here's your second row doors. Now let's look at the rear here. This is something I like better about the Yukon. We couldn't figure out how to open up the lift gate without the key fob. We actually have a button on this, like most SUVs, to open it. But if you look back here, you really can't tell the difference between an Escalade and a Yukon. You got the same storage down below. This looks no different. Got the same, you know, entry chrome pieces. You even got the same buttons to to drop the seats. You got the same, same controls. I'm just kind of surprised there's just not more differentiation, you know, between the two vehicles. You got dual exhaust on both. And honestly, in ways, I think I like this a little bit more than the black tips that were hidden, especially with the one that's actually uh, chipping the paint off a little bit. They both have the, you know, the standard filler cap. They both don't have the passive entry where if you just get close to the vehicle or you just touch your hand, the, the steps come down. I think the Yukon is a really nice vehicle. This is, uh, especially in the Denali, they, they do just enough to the interior and some of the touches that I think it's worth almost getting the Denali over like a loaded out SLT2 package, to me at least. I don't know, I like that, I like the different infotainment system. Just the nice little finishing touches. And it's got the heads up display it's very similar technology. I Now, you know what? This actually does have, this even has the massaging seats. So, I mean, besides just l seats looking different, I don't notice any more technology in the Escalade versus the Denali. Now, for reference, here is a Denali non-ultimate. This is the non-ultimate package. This is a standard Denali. So you can see the bright chrome. And if you look at, here's the bright chrome with the red badging. If we go back there, See the black it looks so much better than the bright chrome right here but 
the difference in price now. Standard Denali 6.2, 10 speed, 94,000. So it's $5,000 more for Denali Ultimate. Yeah. I think it'd be worth it. I agree. So the Ford Expedition is another vehicle we actually considered getting. This one's a limited trim level in a max. $79,000, 302A package. We considered this vehicle. We've had an Expedition in the past and a Max, but um, kind of looking for something that is certified pre-owned, already taken a little bit of a depreciation hit. And so, you know, it's a nice vehicle, but there's not a lot of changes from 2018 to 2023. A slight change in the fascia front and rear, a bigger uh, display in the middle but besides that everything else is powertrain interior exterior it's all the same so we're kind of leaning towards a, another direction to be fair so this i believe is the limited stealth package you can tell because it gets the black emblems black hood a little more blacked out black wheels black fascia black mirrors less chrome yep sure is 23 limited stealth expedition max this is also a 302a package it's got a lot of options $83,000. Once again, I think these are awesome. This one, this trim platform really looks good. I really like this as well. Um, I don't know. I, I just, the blacked out, I think just kind of classes it up to be fair. The platinum is really awesome. This has got all the bells and whistles, all the bells and whistles, pretty much like a Yukon Denali. And it's a good looking vehicle. So I've now looked at the Expedition I've looked at the Navigator, I've looked at the Yukon Denali and the Escalade, looked at multiple different trim packages of each. Every one of them have their pros and cons. Every family is gonna find a different need for, for their situation. Uh, exterior looks wise, I love the 21 plus Escalade. I think the exterior of it is just beautiful. Um, and like I said, there's pros and cons to each. No right, no wrong. It's all on what you're after. Uh, for me, I'm trying to chase a five-star crash rated certified pre-owned vehicle. Um, that's got a lot of features like uh, interior comforts, uh, has already taken some residual loss. Right now, for me, I can't justify the price of these new full-size SUVs. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, most of the premiums are $110,000 to $130,000. You want to lease an Expedition, you're twelve dollars to $1,400 a month. Um, so we're actually looking more at the certified pre-owned and just watch the, you know, kind of the market and see how things go and, uh, and then maybe, you know, get something new down the road. But anyhow, I hope this video is helpful for you. If you're looking for a full size SUV, I know I spent a lot of time looking the past few months trying to decide what to do to replace our Raptor with. Thanks for watching.